no, there's no additions to the video. You can forget that. Welcome back. I'm Jesse Roberts. I'm Jason Hicks. Today we're going to pit two similar technologies against each other today to find out which one is the best for your classroom. We're going to talk about Plickers and Kahoot today and what we call a tech throwdown. And Plickers is obviously the best choice. You know, we're going to do this uh, where I, Mr. Hicks is going to present uh, on Plickers. I'm going to present on Kahoot. And we're going to see which one of us nerds does the best job. All right, so... Uh, Clickers is by far the superior uh, technology here because it's most simple uh, and easy to use for your classroom. Okay, uh, Mr. Roberts is going to uh, show you Kahoot and he's going to talk about it. Whether well, it's so much fun, he's it going is. to talk about all this kind of stuff. Um, but you know what's really fun, Mr. Roberts? He's trying to get uh, 25 to 30 kids logged into devices and, and trying to keep those devices. Uh, connected to Wi-Fi. That's special fun, you know. Uh, Plickers, all I have to do is worry about one device. And, with you know, that one device is just a teacher's device. That could be the teacher's computer or the teacher's cell phone or a tablet, iPad, anything that they have like that. They download the app, load their questions up on the um, uh, website, and then they're good to go. They don't have to worry about all those things about... Um, having all those devices connected to, to Wi-Fi and logins and all that good stuff, you know. And like I said, Mr. Roberts is going to keep on saying. For the video, clarify what you do for a living. Uh, well, I am an instructional technology uh, resource teacher for Wise County Schools, and I'm an advocate for teachers, and I'm an advocate for the proper technology to be used in the classroom at the proper time to get so, the most effective use of time for our teachers. we got all these devices. we got all these Chromebooks in the hands of children. And you want to take us back to the 1900s. You want to go from the washing machine to back to the creek, slapping your clothes on a flat rock. Well, Mr. Roberts, uh, I don't know whether you ever kind of get out into the schools or anything like that and see what's going on, but not every classroom has a complete set of devices. Go ahead. <laughs> Should we just stop now? I mean, is it no, over? No. Okay. So, uh, I thought you were supposed to be an advocate for technology well, use. I am. Okay. 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 We'll see. So, uh, I always say it before I was so rudely interrupted. There is a, uh, a Plickers is by far the best uh, technology for you to use because it's going to be quick, it's going to be simple, and you can already use things that you have in your classroom. The stuff that Mr. Roberts wants to give you is kind of the stuff that you would see in late night infomercials, as you'll see here. Uh, as we got this video, the dumbest things is seen on TV, you know, whether it's the spray on hair, the bold bright, which we'll look at here again in just a second, brush buddies, uh, easy butter, slap chop, OxyClean works. Uh, well, that's that's to be debated. But let's say bold bright. It looks like one of these things. If you go stumbling At around the in the middle of the night. Big box of it on top of the... Or you have, uh, you turn the lights on, your bold bright is a night light that you can attach to the bottom of your toilet seat. Okay? Um, and it will light up. And it will change colors of that light, indicating uh, whether the seat is up or down. Red being for danger. Uh, that this lid is up, and green indicating all is clear and it's safe. Looks like something that you need in your life. Some of you are looking at this now like, man, I need that. It's utterly ridiculous, okay? Exactly the same kind of utter ridiculousness that Mr. Roberts is going to bring along with you uh, as soon as I finish uh, uh, with my part for Plickers. So keep that in mind as you go forward. All right. As a matter of fact, if I were you, as soon as I get done with this Plickers deal, I would just stop this video completely <laughs> before you get completely uh, led astray by Mr. Roberts. So, back to Plickers. We're going to use one device. Okay. The teacher downloads that device or da downloads the app. Okay. And the students, you can see here in this picture, the students have cards. And depending upon how those cards are turned up or down by that shape, indicates their answer choice, whether A, B, C, or D, true or false. So we are talking about multiple choice questions here. Okay, Mr. Roberts likes to point out that Plickers is not that much fun. That You know, looking at these little ink blots aren't fun. But if you look at that little kid right there in the bottom right, that kid is having the time of his life. Okay, he is going to tell his mama about playing Plickers at school that day. 
Okay, he probably writes about it in his senior memory book, and it's going to be one of those things that he, he talks about forever. So let's see if I can get the Plickers app up here for you guys to see. First, where do they go to get Plickers? Well, we go, the, the teacher would go to the uh, uh, Plickers.com website, and uh, uh, that's where you can set up any of your questions or those kind of things. But here's an important thing to keep in mind about Plickers is you don't have to have a projector or smart panel TV or anything like that to get the content to the kids. You could verbally ask questions to students and have them ask them when you um, scan to get their correct answers, okay? You could simply give them a handout of materials that you already have. So Flickers.com, as you can see here, is the website. You can use your uh, Google account to sign in, so that's one less uh, login and password that you have to have to use. So as soon as we get logged in here, we'll kind of let you see. Uh, we'll use Mr. Roberts' uh, uh, login since he's the one uh, controlling the computer here. He just wants to, he won't tell you he doesn't have a Plickers account. I do have a Plickers account. That's why we use my Plickers and my Kahoot account. Uh -huh. So here's the teacher. This is what I would see. Okay. Uh, you can see that I have, uh, <coughs> we have a few uh, question uh, folders set up in there with questions in there. Uh, if you look over to the right, uh, you can see cards, and that's where you would print your cards off. You can choose either, diff you know, several different ways. Uh, I have printed off some large cards, and you'll see those uh, shortly. Uh, but you can print them off either way you want to do. You can also buy you a nice uh, laminated set from Amazon if you chose to do so. But here, here's another great idea. <coughs> if you print multiple of these things off, you know, think about using these things with with uh, younger kids and grant it that on the front side of these A, B, C, or D uh, choices, but what if you wrote on the back of one of these cards, sight words, different things like that, and you could use it in that manner. You know, so it's it's got multiple uh, uh, ways that you can use this if you think outside the box a little bit, uh, especially with some younger kids. All right, so uh, as you get this thing set up, you know, a teacher will go in there. If they have, to, they go to the website. You begin to run uh, your class and your questions as you want. You pull up uh, the app on your phone, and we'll see if we can get my uh, phone mirrored up here to the screen for you guys. So there we go. So there it is. So here, my phone is up here. You can see we've got a few uh, Walking Dead. Um, uh, trivia type, type questions here. So here we go as a teacher. Now, if I was displaying my questions to uh, students, I would, uh, you know, have uh, my uh, smart panel on or my projector or anything like that. But keep in mind, we don't have to have this. All right. Over to the right, I can see uh, a list of the students in my class. And here on the left, we have our questions. And nice thing about it, you can actually put uh, images in your questions uh, if you want to. So uh, as you can see here, I'm just going to simply hit the scan button at the bottom and it'll start to use my camera. And then I can just simply then start scanning around the room and see I have some Plickers cards up on the, the wall here. Uh, and I can see students' name as I scan over top of it. Uh, their answer, I've got the, uh, I can see what everybody chose and see uh, immediately so that I can give feedback to my kids. You know, hey, I've got a lot of red uh, on this question or this particular skill. I can remediate or I can, you know, uh, do some instruction with them right then to be able to, to uh, get them clear on what we need and, and what they what what they may be missing out on. So, uh, you know, I think that is a great um, benefit of using Plickers is because you can immediately fix those kind of things, okay? Later on, wake me up when the fun starts. <laughs> Well, you know. Uh, well, hey! Yeah. So uh, uh, that's how you would use Plickers. Okay, you can quickly scan those things through there. So he, got those. Was he trying to buy off the people with throwing up his credit card? Uh, trying no, to buy no, votes. No, Mr. Roberts, we were not. So, uh, but Plickers will most definitely be your best uh use of uh, your time. You don't have to have those logins and those kind of things. You can already use materials that you have. If you have a multiple choice format, you can just send those things out there uh, on paper, have the kids answer, 
scan those things in, and it's grades for you. Okay, Mr. Roberts is an advocate for fun, freeing up time for teachers so that they can have a little bit more <laughs> me time. That is fun, okay, to, fun to do what you want to do. So, uh, Mr. Roberts has made us a list of Plicker's pros and cons here. Uh, and you can tell that he made this list because it's... Uh, so I made, the, I made the presentation. I made the questions for Plickers. I made the kahoot. What have you done for this presentation? So I've come here and lied to these fine people. I have done a lot for this presentation, Mr. Roberts. Okay. Um, you know, first of all, I don't lead them astray and lie to them. So we'll go through Mr. Roberts' list. And uh, we'll take a lot of those cons from the right and we're going to throw them to the left. All right, great pro to this thing is one device is required to use. You don't have to have multiple devices, multiple logins for every student in the room. So students don't need a device. It's very simple to use, okay? Gives you instant feedback so that you can correct any of those things that you, or any of those problems that your students might have in the classroom immediately. You don't have to wait till you get results back later on to go back and look and then uh, try to determine, okay, which kids had problems with it and then remediate one single kid, okay? Uh, so it's perfect for you that have limited technology. Con, students cannot do this from home, he's going to say, because Kahoot, you can do from home if you use the app and make those assignments. But I'm going to tell you what, I don't know about you, but most kids I know, given the choice between doing a Kahoot at home and playing Fortnite, Fortnite wins every single time, Mr. Roberts, every single time. So as a teacher, you're just going to be upset that they come back in and they're going to say, uh... You know, good news is I went uh, up two levels on Fortnite last night. Bad news is my internet went out and I couldn't do my Kahoot. Okay? So you're just saying that we should never give homework ever. That's not what I'm saying. I'm so you're, but no, you're saying they're going to choose Fortnite over something. Else. I am, and I'm saying that I'm an advocate for the proper use of technology, and I'm a teacher advocate, unlike you. All right, students cannot do it from a mobile device as it a con. I think that, once again, is a pro because now we don't have to worry about multiple devices, okay? We don't have to worry about... You just about said you were an advocate for the proper use of technology. I am. Couldn't a student's mobile device be managed correctly and used in the classroom? It could be, but that also adds a layer of another thing for our teachers who are already overworked and underpaid, okay? Now, uh, we tested this theory out, as a matter of fact. You know, Mr. Roberts is telling a group of teachers, hey, if you just get up from behind your seat, unlike Mr. Hicks, and walk around a room and you properly manage these devices and what kids are doing, it's not going to be a problem. You know, Mr. Roberts, you're in a classroom. All right, we're doing a Kahoot together. I joined the Kahoot from my phone. Lo and behold, Mr. Robert gets a text from me during the Kahoot while he... He's standing up there by the desk, and he's doing such a great job managing his classroom and the devices those kids are on at that time. True story. <laughs> All right. Has to be teacher-led. I feel like that you guys are great teachers. All right. That's why you're in the job that you're doing. Okay. I think it's a good thing when you're leading, tech leading uh, instruction. Mr. Roberts would rather you throw them over on a device somewhere or another and let it babysit them. Okay. And finally, he says, teacher has to create the content. Obviously, if you want your questions to put, be up on Plickers, you do have to go in there and copy and paste some questions, some answer choices into Plickers if you want it to be. You have to do the same thing in Kahoot. You can also use the materials that you already have if they're printed out, okay? Give those uh, printed out uh, materials to them, whether that be an SOL, uh, uh, practice test, whatever you got, and then that thing can go into Plickers, all you have to do is put an answer key in, so then it degrades it. It takes me about five minutes to set up an answer key for, for multiple questions, okay? So very quickly, very easily, we can do that. Matter of fact, we can probably answer a, an entire uh, packet of questions in Plickers by the time we get logged in and get set up to even do a Kahoot. All right, so Mr. Roberts, that's Plickers, okay? You guys can turn this thing off now if you want to, but, uh, you know, I, We'll give Kahoot its due. We'll give it a shot. You get up to sell, my seat. You, I got to go get some. You try to sell Kahoot to us. This is not fun. There's nothing fun about this. Now, you talk about, you know, kids holding the paper up, just playing their answer. You know what they're actually doing? They're holding this up in front of their face. 
to hide their displeasure and their sadness. Listen, I feel like our teachers are probably pretty engaging and they're having a good time doing the things that they're doing. Okay? Yeah, you, talk, you throw those words out engaging. But go ahead. But you hate on the product that is the most engaging, that is fun, is competitive, that kids love to do it. Now let's hit on some of these cons of, of these. Would we, want our teacher, would we want our students to actually, if we talk about engaging, we want them to actually engage with a physical, live person or your little silly game? Both, because it's a learning experience. You're getting a lot out of it. Okay. Uh, so students cannot do it at home. You know, that's a big con for me. You know, it's SOL remediation time. We're getting ready to take these standardized tests. I want to get my students as much practice as they can get. I'm going to give them every opportunity they can to be prepared for these tests. So being able to do it at home is a big plus. You know, not, not just doing it at home. They can do it on their phone, on the way to ball practice, on the way home from dance practice. You know, just going to the doctor's office. They miss class that day. They can pull out a coop while they're in the waiting room and play it on their phone. All right. Can't, students cannot use mobile devices. All right. That is true. You know, you said that's a should be a pro because that's just another classroom management piece. But here's the thing. We got teachers everywhere, not just Wise County. All over the country are begging for devices, Chromebook cards, iPad cards. They want devices in their classroom. But you walk in the classroom, and some teachers have a box with 20 of these locked up. You've taken 20 devices away from students. Why not allow them to use this device? You said you was an advocate for correct technology use. Let's teach them how to use these correctly and take this use to our advantage. Because kids love it. Anytime they get to play with this, it's a treat. Uh, it does have to, clickers has to be teacher led. Kahoot doesn't. You know, if you do any kind of centers or station uh, work in your classroom, you know, the Kahoot uh, challenge mode could be one of your stations. If you could have those kids working independently with Kahoot, you could be working with a group of kids remediating. You could have another group of kids doing another project and do the whole rotation and the switching thing. Oh, you could. The teacher probably do more rotate switching because they're going to be going from this one, taking time away from this to get those logged in and reconnected to Wi-Fi on that side. So that will do a lot of switching. I can't speak for other counties, but our technology director, Dr. Scott Kaiser, has done a great job with the infrastructure for our Wi-Fi here in Wise County, and our Wi-Fi is pretty dependable. All right, so let's go on. Uh, so do. we're going to talk about Kahoot. You know, Mr. Hicks showed you an infomercial. He showed you the slap shot, the butter cutter, whatever you call it, the bold bribe. Yeah. I'm getting ready to show you something from a live, breathing, Wise County Public Schools student when asked what she thought of Kahoot. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very simple. It's a very short clip, but it's touchy. It's simple, and it's short. She loves Kahoot. Kids love doing love Kahoot. Kahoot. Every time that we've done this presentation with teachers, well, they, they rave about it. My kids love it. You know, I've had teachers even say this. You know, when I say the work Kahoot, it's like Christmas has come to my classroom. Kids love doing it. Then we were with a group of teachers, and they said, you know, it kind of cut out a lot and, and those kind of things. I don't, well, remember, I don't, yeah. remember, I don't remember that. I think yeah. that's your propaganda. No. Yeah, he's full of propaganda, which you will see at the end of the slide. And show. speaking of propaganda, why is this video so short? It's only two seconds. Yes, she it, says, I love Kahoot. But yeah. if you let this thing go up to five seconds, she would, uh, you would then hear her ask the question, what the heck is Kahoot? And that's a lie. Uh, and a lie. you haven't told these folks that this young lady is Blood relation to you. Distant blood relation. I'm from Pound, Virginia. If anybody out there knows anything about Pound, Virginia, we're all related. we got to travel at least 30 miles outside of corporate limits to find someone to marry without some uh, suspicion. Well, ah, so let's go on. So Kahoot, it's a student, man, uh, it's a student learning. It's hard to choke on. It's, it's hard to just get spit it out. It's, it's a student response <laughs> system. Yeah. Get me all tore up. Uh, it works similar to clickers. The question is uh, up on the teacher's smart board, smart panel, whiteboard, whatever they're projecting on. The uh, question is projected in front of the student. The answer choices will show up on their device as a color and a shape. So they will match the corresponding shape and color to their answer choice. And it is timed. That's something you're going to attack here in a second. It is timed. And students are rewarded points based on how accurately and how quickly they answer the question. So if everybody in the class gets the question correct, the one who answered it first gets more 
points. Because we always want kids to try to answer as quickly as possible, especially when it comes to a standardized test. We're looking for accuracy, and they're just being rewarded based on how quickly they answer it. Mm-hmm. You know, I go always go back to the PALS test. When we start with kindergarten, pre-K kids, you know, doing sight words, you know, they're timed. If they don't know it in so many seconds, they don't get credit for it. Same thing here. You know, when I was in the classroom and I asked a question and a kid didn't know it in three seconds, you know what that told me? He probably didn't retain that information. That's something I maybe need to go back. I need to hit on a little bit more. You know, if you, had, if you were doing clickers and you could see that right quickly, you could fix that right then. You don't you have do, to go back You could do, do the same thing with Kahoot. You see a lot of people in your class missing it. Okay, well, let's see how this thing works. Right, let's go Come on. on. All right, so... What y'all know is Mr. Hicks took up like 15 minutes of your time explaining his product because it, it's a lot more complicated than he's la- uh, letting on. You know, the creation mm-hmm. of the questions, you have to do all that yourself. You cannot go to Kahoot.com and find a, or sorry, you can't go to Plickers.com and find a pre-made Plickers. You can go to Kahoot.com and find a pre-made Kahoot that you can give to your students. You can go to or a lot you can places. create your own. You can go to a lot of places and find some pre-made activities out there that aren't very good. But you could also find some good ones. Now you could. So who's got time to wade through all those things to find the gems? So you, this is the, t- uh, the, av- the teacher advocate for giving you me time. And I'm giving you the product that will allow them to have more me time, and you hate hating on it. Well, give them some more me time and wrap this thing up. All right, here we go. All right, so there's two parts to Kahoot. Kahoot.com is the teacher side. This is where the teachers will go to create the Kahoots and to uh, start the Kahoots. The students will go to Kahoot.it. So that's where they will go on their device. So I'm going to get Mr. Hicks to sign in to. Actually, not, don't even worry about it. Don't have to worry about it. I'm going to show him a different way, Hicks. Okay. I don't even need you. You just go on and leave. All right. So we're going to go to Kahoot.com. All right. So this is Kahoot.com. You can log in. You can log in with your Google account. Mr. Roberts, why wouldn't you log in with your Google account? Well, I, I created my Kahoot account before Wise County became a Google school division. Three years ago, and you believe this product so much, you've updated your login info. It's already there. It's already saved in Chrome. So, you know, I'm still using Google. Yeah, you can go right ahead. All right. So, to create a new Kahoot, you can come up here to the new K. All right. Choose what type of activity you want to do a quiz, a jumble, discussion, or survey. By far, the most popular is the quiz. Uh, you have to give it a title. You know, you want to be very specific with your title also. So, And you have to give a description. Uh, visibility, if you only want this to be available for you to use, leave only me. But if you want to put it out there for everybody to use, you would choose everybody. Choose your language, and you have to choose your audience. So we're done at school. You could upload an image of this Kahoot if you wanted it to be more marketable or for people to find it. Uh, you could do some credit resources, and you could shoot an intro video explaining what you're getting ready to do for your students. Ah, so to add a question, click on the uh, purple plus, type in your question here, and you type in your answer choices below. And you also uh, signify which one is correct. You can do more than one correct answer if you choose to do so. So that's how you actually create the Kahoot. Let's go and let's look at a Kahoot in action. That looks like a lot of fun so far, Mr. Roberts. Oh, so this, this is just the setup part. All right, so we're going to go find a Kahoot. And we'll just scroll down here and find one. I'm going to do a Civil War review. I'm an old history teacher. All right, if you see this right here, this challenge mode, this is how you can assign it as a homework or to be done independently. When I click on Challenge, I will choose an end date when I want this Kahoot to end. Give the date and a time. All right, I can just play it right now. If you hit the three dots over here, I could duplicate it. 
If I like this a lot and I want to use it as my own, I can duplicate it, put it into my cahoots up here. Here are some that I've already uh, found that I liked. I've made a duplicate of them. I can go in and edit those. I can add questions if I wanted to. I can take away questions if I wanted to. You know, I can do any of that information that I see fit. Let's go back. Here we go. Back to my Civil War review. Uh, and I can also preview it. This is what it's going to look like for your students. Over here on the right, you have their device. Uh, here's the Kahoot. You can do classic mode or you can do a team mode. Uh, here's some game options. Uh, name generator. If you're not Mr. Hicks and scare your students are going to create a naughty nickname, you can turn this on and it's going to force them to spin, uh, choose a spinner and it will choose a Kahoot approved safe nickname for them. Uh, well, but once you do that, it takes away the team mode. So if you're going to do a team mode, you have to leave it like this. And my suggestion is, if you're not Mr. Hicks and scared of your students doing something naughty, uh, go ahead and make up the team names before you start to Kahoot. Uh, here's another one that I highly suggest that you do, display the game pin throughout. That way, someone comes in late or... The Wi-Fi drops out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That happens on a very rare occasion. Kids could get back into the coot quickly and you wouldn't have to stop the coot. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just go ahead and do the classic. See, when you when the students go to coot.it, it will ask them for a game pin. So I'm going to type in the game pin. See if you can join Mr. Hicks. It's a lot of numbers to type in for students. Well, number recognition is you know, SOL for pre-K. So I think pre-K through 12 shouldn't have a problem with this. All right, so nickname. We'll type my name in. There's Mr. Hicks, a bunch of Kahoot. So if a nickname comes up that the teacher does not like, we can get rid of it. We have veto power. All right, so we're going to start to Kahoot. The question will display up here on the teacher's display. Uh, most teachers will read it to them which event marked the beginning of the Civil War. Now the answer choices will appear. See, there's a picture. Here are our answer choices. Which event marked the beginning of the Civil War? And... Mr. Hicks? Yes, sir. You missed that question. I was trying to get the bonus points to answer as fast as I could. Aren't you an old history teacher? Yeah, but I was trying to get the bonus points. The important stuff here. No, no. All right, so let's do the next one. All right, so you are rewarded based on how accurately and quickly you answer the question. So Mr. Hicks is trying to prove a point that kids can go through and just click buttons, trying to get a high score. But if they don't answer the question correctly, they get zero points. So it's very important for the students to go and answer the question accurately. Speed's not the most important thing. Accuracy is. Uh, which of the following was not a main strategy used by the North during the Civil War? Gave control of the Mississippi River, capture uh, capital Richmond, blockade southern ports, conquer South Carolina before any other state. Both of us got that incorrect. Ah, right, so this is how Kahoot works. Uh, we could go on and I can show my history of prowess and defeat Mr. Hicks. You know, he's been out of the classroom a very, very long time. He's kind of lost contact with you know what students like. You know, students like to have fun, you know. Stand in front of your lecturer for 90 minutes and talk to them. You know, when they were sitting there with that glazed look in their eye, that wasn't excitement. That was boredom. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is how Kahoot works. Uh, Quick question, though, Mr. Roberts. Yes. Uh, assuming that there was more than two people in that Kahoot game that just played and you, yes. you, know, you were saying, that, hey, I missed that question. If there was more than two people in there, how would you know that was me who missed the first question? You have to know their nickname, so you oh. have to stop. See how you can control when the next question comes up? That's how you would know if a lot of people missed it, yeah. you can stop so, and go over it. So short answer would be you don't know who missed it. Okay, thank you. Okay. You know, he's going to hear, he's going to come back and say, you know, I'm going to give Plickers its due. Plickers gives you the student by student uh, uh, breakdown. Kahoot gives you a question by question. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a, that is a uh, 
pro of Plickers. I will give Plickers their due. But here's some things that Kahoot does better. You know, it's highly engaging. Hit Mr. Hicks calls it flashy. It is flashy. Kids like doing it. It's fun. You know, I know it's a word that's foreign to you, but fun, kids like fun. I like having fun. Uh, students can use their mobile device. Like I said, this is a very powerful tool. You know, we've used it a lot in this presentation, haven't we? Kids love their phones. I love using my phone. You know, you go to DMV, you go to have a doctor's point. You're in a waiting room. What do most people do? They pull up their phone. They're on Candy Crush. They're playing Angry Birds. They're playing games. So you're uh, saying wasting time. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you're the one who uh, showed me Angry Birds, by the way. Ah, uh, so gamification of instruction. That's a big buzzword in educational technology. Gamifying instruction. It's making it fun. Teaching through games. Kids like games. They love it. We love games. You know, people love the, you know, badging's a part of all this. And don't say that we don't love badging. If you look at any of our uh, email signatures, we have all of our badges displayed. You know, I, we love, we, we love it. You can't say you don't. Gamification. Buzzword of education. Show us the open classroom concept. See how good that worked more, out? It's a little more proven than the open classroom. It can be done independently as an instructor. We've kind of already talked about that. If you do do centers, if you are using stations, this would be a great tool. And it can be done as homework. You know, having them, if you, God forbid, have bad scores on your standardized tests, principal comes in, Mr. Hicks. Explain these scores. What did you do to help these kids? You know, we asked them from a lecture for 90 minutes. We did clickers. Oh, I would have had. What you, you, you send home with? Well, if I'd use clickers to start with, I wouldn't have had bad scores, Mr. Rocks. <laughs> you know, it does give you instant feedback. I will get clickers as due. It, clickers will give you a little more detailed reports. Uh, the cons, you do have to have more than one device, but you do not have to have a device in every student's hands. And most of them have a device. Uh, you are dependent on internet connection, but let's be honest with education nowadays in the modern times, not back when you taught. You know, internet is a very important thing. Internet goes out, schools become like the walking dead. People are walking around, what do I do? What do I do? Principals are calling our boss angrily. He's like, there's wailing, there's gnashing of teeth down here. you got to get this fixed now. Are you trying to say our teachers cannot teach without Wi-Fi connection? No, I'm just saying I, it's I have a little more faith it's in them than that, Mr. Nowadays Roberts. because we are so dependent on technology. And you are in the technology department, I think. I don't know how much longer, but you, you know, are right now. I don't know how many, you know, you may have been dependent upon Wi-Fi for your instruction, but I'm not so sure that everybody else is. <laughs> ah, so... It's time for your propaganda. I'm going to throw it up here for you. Yeah, so as I told you from the beginning, Mr. Roberts is the infomercial guy. He is the sham wow guy. It's going to look like it's going to be the greatest thing. You've heard him throw out his buzzwords, gamify, fun. But I'm going to tell you what, you go in and you're trying to log in 25 first graders, and why? And not only after you get them logged in, and then Wi-Fi goes out and you're logging them in a, a, again, that is a special level of Dante's Inferno that you don't want to be in. Okay? So uh, stick with something that's proven. You're going to have to have one device and that you only have to use to grade your things and you know which individual kid had problems with so that you can rectify with that student right then. Mr. Roberts' product, you will get a whole report over how the classroom did, but then he would probably recommend after that is you do clickers with the same question so you can identify which students are having problems. Uh, so here, that was Hicks's propaganda. So here's my chance. Everything this man told you, he's trying to lead you astray. He's giving you alternate facts about my product. He's spreading fake news. No. Yes, you're spreading fake news. So pick one, decide which one is best for your classroom, and the, the choice is obviously Plickers. And I, you know I, what I would do is actually email Mr. Roberts and let him know that Plickers is by far the best uh, choice to use in your classroom. If you want your students to have fun and be engaged and actually like their learning environment, use Plickers. But if you, know, if you want to stand in front of the lecture for 90 minutes and just get out there in front of your kids and not get out and actively engage them, by all means, use clickers. You can email Mr. Hicks and tell, tell him how much fun your students had using Kahoot. Very good. But well, we thank you guys for your time. Uh, and like once again, let Mr. Roberts know how wrong he is. 
All right, so we we presented this to you guys. All right, let's uh, be a little candid with you here. They're tell both, them, tell they're, them you lied. They're both great products. Uh, they both have different uses. Uh, when we broke this presentation up, one of us had to pick Kahoot. I'm a Flickers guy. Reason being, I, I like Kahoot too. But for me, Flickers would be something I would use every day in my instruction. Kahoot is something I want to use for remediation when I want to have some engaging, you know, have my students to have some fun, you know, doing warm-ups, uh, bell ringers, things like that. Flickers is going to be my everyday assessment tool, but they're both great tools. Well, I mean, two weeks ago you were singing a different song, and I'm glad you finally come to see the light. Now he's lying. No, he's lying. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be truthful, you know, get out of character here. We're getting real, uh-huh. mad real. Wow. All right, so... Once again, thank y'all for joining us. These are both great tools. Uh, try them both out in your classroom. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot one of us an email. We'd be happy to sit down and talk to you. And y'all have a great day.